Trial Tuesday once again. Today we're talking about a recent assault case involving a volunteer lacrosse coach. Those charges have since been dismissed. Attorney David Ayler, who I believe was a MIDI during his lacrosse career, joins us right now to explain. Counselor, let's talk all about this case. Uh, basically, a gentleman was a coach, a volunteer coach at one of the learning institutions of uh, higher education here in Charleston and got into kind of a skirmish out on the street, then was fired from his job. But you say perhaps not rightfully so. Well, basically, essentially, the uh, situation was this. Uh, Garrett Rosecrans is his name, and he's a lacrosse coach. He coaches at the Citadel um, with their club team. He also coaches with uh, youth around the area, uh, does a lot of camps and things like that. And unfortunately, he was involved in an altercation at the Waffle House, right outside the Waffle House, and was originally arrested for assault and battery in the second degree. That was later then uh, dropped down to the lower degree of uh, assault and battery third degree. Yesterday was supposed to be his trial, but ultimately the charge was dismissed. And the entire time, uh, his claim was, of course, that it was a self-defense case. Stand right. your ground. Okay, and that gentleman was dismissed from his position at the Citadel, is that correct? Correct. At this point, at, uh, well, once he was arrested, he was no longer with the Citadel. Now, um, hopefully, he'll be able to regain that employment since it's proven, I think, through the court system that he was actually justified in his actions. Right. Now, you, you mentioned that stand your ground rule. We've seen a couple of cases uh, kind of with that tagline in there, uh, most notably Trayvon Martin, the situation that happened down in Sanford, Florida. So what is the ground, what, where, what is the law, rather, when it comes to stand your ground, and what do people need to know about self-defense? Well, ultimately, it's, it's really just a, a different version of what we're familiar with here in the castle doctrine where you obviously can protect yourself in your home. Uh, your home in this situation is your physical body and when you feel threatened or, or someone actually puts their hands on you, you have the right to defend yourself. You do not have to flee from where you are which is essentially the stand your ground. Uh, in this situation, uh, this individual was physically threatening uh, Mr. Rosecrans at which point he reacted to it and defended himself and, and that's where it really comes down to because obviously it's one thing to strike another individual if it's unprovoked but if it is provoked and you can show that you were in fact threatened or maybe even physically assaulted, then it's okay in the eyes of the law to protect yourself. How exactly do you prove that? I'd say if it's a fight, a one-on-one -on -one fight, now it becomes uh, he said, she said, he said, he said. How exactly do you go through a court of law and prove that to investigators and for prosecutors and defense attorneys that really that you, you were just protecting yourself? Uh, and, and that's the hardest part. Luckily in this case, obviously you had the word of uh, the individual who's the alleged victim and then Mr. Rosecrans words, but luckily there was two Waffle House waitresses who had actually been harassed ironically by the victim earlier that night and they witnessed it they saw the situation so having those unbiased statements the non-interested parties if you will as witnesses I know from being a prosecutor and a defense attorney those are really the solid thing that you want to look at within these cases sure and that's where you have to do your homework as an attorney to make sure that that client gets the best representation absolutely and it's a good thing for mr. Rosecrans because he shouldn't have been you know ultimately convicted of something when he, ultimately he was just defending himself now let's let's talk about the prospects of damages done to a client right now let's say you you get arrested for for a charge like this and, and really if it gets publicized which it did because of his position that takes on a life of its own perhaps you lose your job perhaps uh, some things in your life get changed how can you go about getting your life back together after these things have been proven to not be the case that was in the beginning you you know, that's a question I get from a lot of my clients. Obviously, with the media, whether it be um, you know over the internet or of course television, radio, things like that, the newspaper. Uh, when you're initially arrested, it's everywhere. Unfortunately, the story isn't as interesting uh, when an individual is actually relieved of right. that charge. You know, especially if it's not through a trial like a dismissal, like with Mr. Rosecrans. So, really, the best they can do is try to make sure the word gets out that in fact they were found not guilty, or in fact, in this case, the case just thrown out and dismissed, uh, so that that can then be played back into the media. So to really try to restore as much as possible from all the people out there that you may have touched, for instance, with him, with children and their parents, um, you know, to see, hey, look, this isn't a bad person. This is somebody that was just defending themselves. But in terms of that stand your ground lot, you want to try and not get into those situations in the first place so that you don't have to stand your ground. It's not easy to be able to prove stand your ground, so of course it's best to try to avoid it if you can. Unfortunately, there are times you can't. Indeed. Attorney Dave Miller, thank you for your time as always, sir. Thanks for having me. Appreciate you being here. Much more after the break. Make sure you stay with us.